Welcome back to the Green Beans Go channel. It's your host, me, and we are here for our Tuesday Power Rankings. We've officially hit week one. The NFL season starts this week officially. Game on Thursday, game on Friday, games on Sunday, game on Monday. I am very excited. And so with that excitement comes a little bit of work we have to do. And we have to do our first official week one rankings. I did a preseason week zero rankings video, and that got over 2,000 views. So shout out to all of you. I hope you will continue to come back week after week as I do these rankings. We rank all 32 teams every week on the following criteria. We have Super Bowl Convo. I try my best to do one AFC and one NFC, even though there may be multiple teams in the conversation. Then we have comfy playoffs, teams who I think should make the postseason with little to no effort. We have Week 18 Warriors, which is a new tier this year that we added to kind of account for teams that are not comfy playoffs, but are a little bit better than hmm, teams that will probably have their postseason decided in week 17 or 18. Then we have the hmm category or the meh category, the 6 and 11, slightly below hmm, and wins the draft. So we'll start with Arizona. And Arizona is a team that people are optimistic about. But I'm afraid the optimism is a little bit misplaced. I don't know if Kyler Murray is going to stay healthy. Has he stayed healthy in the last few years? Is Marvin Harrison Jr. going to be him? Is James Conner going to keep up what he's been able to do? A lot of good things on paper, but I am not sure. However, I do think it would be slight a slight disservice to put them at 6 and 11. I'm going to remain optimistic and put them at hmm. The Baltimore Ravens are a team that I am high on this year. I've been high on them all offseason. I think it's just a matter of time that Lamar gets over that hurdle. And I think bringing in Derrick Henry to you know, uh, pair with Lamar is, is nuts, truly. I think that is going to be a combination that I, I, I'm shocked we aren't talking about it more. I, I don't know why it's not being discussed at length every day. It should be an insane one-two punch. So I believe that this is a team that's just been on the cusp for a half a decade, and I think they have a chance to get it done. The Bears. The Bears. I'm going to move this so you guys can see the teams that are coming next because I don't really like that you guys can't do that, and I think that that's ridiculous of me that I would ever set it up like that. So forgive me, and I hope you'll forgive me for that. Okay. The Bears. Again, another team that has some optimism, but I think the NFC North is a division that will rank top two in the league in terms of difficulty, in terms of records, and just in terms of quality of team. So do the Bears have a shot to make a wild card in the NFC? Yes. I don't think they're going to win their division, but I do think they could be in a conversation for a Week 18 Warrior. And I know that's insane, um, and actually, I'm sitting here questioning why I'm actually doing it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to stick them there. The Falcons are a team that I will probably diss consistently from now until January. So if you are a big diehard Falcons person um, and you don't want to watch these videos, there's your warning. I, I know that their schedule is the easiest on paper. They have the easiest strength of schedule in the NFL this year. I don't believe that Kirk Cousins is going to come back at full strength. I don't believe in this team. I think their head coach, their new head coach, will right the ship. I think he is all that in a bag of chips. I do believe in him. And I think if he can get his guys uh, to buy in, then maybe they they make the playoffs. But I just don't know if I trust them when it comes to putting it between the hash marks and getting the job done. So Falcons... I'm, you know, here's the thing. I want to put them in the hmm, but I also trust the math that they're they're in a fairly weak division. They have an easy schedule, and so the path to getting there is is easier. So I am going to put them in Week 18 Warriors, and you know, I digress. For the Bills, a team again, uh, the Bills and the Ravens are just AFCs. You know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride, and. I hope that this year it changes because I have said multiple times on this channel, I'm tired of watching the Patrick Mahomes show. I know people love it. I know that there's not, you know, like he's not drama, like he's a good dude, like he brings a lot of fans in. You can't say anything bad about the guy besides that he might put ketchup on steak. But I just like, I like parody. I like newness. I like excitement. And I'm just sick of watching the same thing over and over. So 
you know, the Bills lost a lot on paper, and that does make me nervous. Um, I think the Jets and the Dolphins could give them a run for their money in the division. So I am not sold yet on the Bills. I, I'm going to have, I have been in the past, trust me. I have been a, bill, a big Bills stand in the past, but this year I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that back a little bit. Panthers, Panthers, I believe in Bryce Young. I believe in their new coach, and I think this team will rebound and and should win five, six games, um, believe it or not. So I'm actually going to elevate them. They they were stuck in wins the draft last year for an, uh, for nearly the whole season, okay? But I am going to, well, I'm, one, I'm going to fix this again because it's bothering me, but I'm going to move them up to 6-11, and 11, which may be my boldest prediction yet. Bengals, I don't think should have any problem making it to the playoffs. Uh, they should win their division or they should compete with the, the Ravens to win their division. I just think these two teams are a one-two punch. One's going to win the division. One's going to get the wild card. And I think it's just, it just is what it is. Okay. Browns still don't believe in the Browns. Um, could, could the Browns, you know, you know, do I think the Browns are better than the Falcons and the Bears? Sure. But because of how the AFC and the NFC shake out, they have a less likely chance to make the playoffs because these two teams are in their division. So while I do think that the Browns are on the level of these teams, I think the competition they have to outpace is tougher. So that is why I'm putting them in, hmm, but again, I'll change that if I need to. Cowboys, guys, I, I, it's again, Dak Prescott, always the bridesmaid, never the bride type type of situation again with, with, with Dak. I, I think this could be a Dak MVP season. I, I, I think he's suited better than he's ever been suited. And I think the Cowboys will finally outpace the Eagles comfortably and will win the uh, division, the, the NFC East. So I'm going to put the Cowboys in comfy playoffs, and I would not be shocked if by week 12 and 13, we're talking about the Super Bowl with this team. Another bold prediction, I know. I don't believe in the Broncos. I don't believe in Bo Nix right now. This is really, I mean, guys, you guys, you guys are champions for sticking around for this because golly, all right, that's just, that's just annoying, okay? Um, the Lions, uh, the Lions, the Lions, the Lions. The deal is this, guys. I, if I had to make the boldest prediction or, or the, the strongest prediction I could, there's something in the air with the Lions, Something is aligning, aligning for them. I think Super Bowl is within reach. I think these two teams are your teams in the NFC. And I know that the 49ers exist, trust me. But I, I have my eye on these two teams this year. The Packers, I truly believe, are getting too much credit. I, I don't believe they are as good as people are expecting. I'm going to put the Packers in hmm right now. But I will be the first to say, and I'll be the first to say I'm wrong if I'm wrong, but I will be the first to say, I think this could be a 6-11 and 11 team. Their division is tough. Uh, you know, they're, I don't, I don't believe in Matt LaFleur, their coach. I don't think he is, you know, uh, as, as good as people say he is. How about that? All right. So we'll put them in hmm for now and we'll get back to it. The, the, the Titans should win the AFC South with relative ease. I don't think the Colts will give them too much competition. Jaguars probably get, not give them too much competitions. And the Titans, you know, we'll see. So I'm going to stick the, the Texans in comfy playoffs. The Colts, I, again, I want to believe in this team. I think on paper they have bright spots. But I'm not sold on it all coming together. Anthony Richardson kind of missing his rookie campaign. I believe will hurt this team. So I'll stick them in hmm. Jaguars. Again, a, a team that that has kind of just teetered on wild card, you know, playoff potential for the last half decade. And I just think it's a bad time that a Trevor for Trevor Lawrence, uh, CJ Stroud, they get Mixon, they get digs. It, you know, can't say anything else. So could one of these two teams take a wild card spot in the AFC? Sure. Am I at a point right now where I feel comfortable endorsing that? No. Chiefs should have no problem winning the AFC West. It's a cupcake division. 
I mean, the rich get richer, right? So we'll stick them in comfy playoffs. I don't believe in, you know what? I'm putting the, I, I hate Jim Harbaugh so much. Sorry, that's not nice. I dislike Jim Harbaugh so much, and I think he is a slimy, sneaky, lying, cheating son of a gun. I'm putting them in wins the draft out of spite only. No football analysis needed, spite only. The Rams, tough division, um, second favorite to win the NFC West behind, obviously, the 49ers. I think they have some potential. The problem is I think they are an, in- they are an injury or two away on the offense from being irrelevant. Uh, you know, Matt Stafford goes down. Cooper Cup or uh, Puka Nakua have problems. Uh, Kyron Williams suffers an ankle. In- like, it's just they have to have a perfect season to be in the conversation. So maybe this is a little harsh, but I'm being cautious by putting them here. The Raiders, uh, Gardner Minshew named the starter, I believe. Six and 11. Dolphins, I think could have a shot at, if Tua brings what we saw him bring first half of the season last year, this could be a week 18 warrior. It could be a, uh, a team that has a chance to win the division or the wild card fighting the Bills and I believe the Jets. Vikings lose JJ McCarthy. I don't think it's a huge loss. I think Sam Darnold was going to be the guy anyway. So I, I think that is more just media hype um, and overreaction. I, I truly believe Sam Darnold was going to get the start. I think this team will compete. I think this team will be relevant, but I don't think it will. I don't know, though. Sam Darnold, Aaron Jones, J- Justin Jefferson. Like, it, it, uh, this team might be here. Th- like, it's be- I think they're better than them. But I think, that, yeah, I think the Vikings are actually, hmm, they may, they may have a chance. But the Patriots are not going to have a chance. We're just going to put them at wins the draft and move forward. Saints, haven't believed in the Saints for some time. I don't think Derek Carr is that well-rounded. Uh, but they're in an easy division. I think 6-11 and 11 is fair for them. The Giants, people think the Giants, people think a lot of things. When's the draft for the Giants? The Jets. If Aaron Rod- listen, guys, again, I'll get scolded all year. I, I believe in the Jets. I, I maybe overly believe in the Jets. I, I do, I don't like Aaron Rodgers. Like, it, it's not like a, I don't have a fandom for him, but I, part of me wants to see him do well one last season, and then go go on with his life as he needs to. So we'll put them in Week 18 Warriors. Obviously, we have three teams here from the AFC East. One of them is going to win the division because it's not going to be the Patriots. That One of these teams will move up inevitably, and the other two could have a wild card shot. Eagles, I think, have seen enough. I think the loss of Jason Kelsey, I think uh, sort of this plateau of, uh, you know, conference champions, Super Bowl these last few years, I just think they're going to come crashing down. And um, I think it's going to be a wild card conversation, but I think the Cowboys win the division. Steelers named Russell Wilson as the starter. I'm not sure if that's going to continue. I will put them at 6-11 and 11 because, like somebody said in the comments of my last video, Mike Tomlin he hasn't disappointed yet, so I'll put some trust in him that he'll be able to do what he needs to do. The Seahawks get some new... What are we doing? I didn't approve this ad. Get this ad off of here. Good heavens. There's kids that watch this show, all right? The Seahawks get a new head coach, new you know, leadership. They keep a lot of the same players. Uh, I think that bodes well for them. And I, I genuinely, I think, listen, you know, uh, I acknowledge my bias, right? Like, uh, but I also acknowledge that I'm pretty fair with my analysis of this team. I, I understand when they suck. And I also understand when they're being undervalued in the market. And I think Seattle's being undervalued in the market right now. And I think they have a shot at the wild card. I'm not saying they're going to beat out San Francisco and maybe not even the Rams, um, over the course of the year, but I, I think, I think this team is better than than St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis showing my age, better than Los Angeles right now. But uh, you know, this team has just so many weapons. 
They've done it for years. They have chemistry. So um, it's hard to to pick the Seahawks over the Niners for the division. We'll put them there. Tampa Bay is my prediction to win the NFC South. I, I think, again, this is another team that's kept a lot of the same pieces, and I think that will be something that bodes well for them. So we will slot them there. All right, so we will say that we have – we'll get to that at the end. Um, Titans, again, on paper, you know, Tony Pollard, Hopkins, Ridley. If Will Levis can come in and be a top 10, and maybe that's giving him too much credit, a top 10 quarterback in the league, golly, the, the AFC South gets a, a, gets pretty interesting. I'm going to put them in hmm, with their other two counterparts and say it's the Texans' division to lose, but – any of these other three teams would not shock me if they win. Okay, Daniel starts for Washington. I don't I don't expect I just don't think his situation is good. And I've talked about situations before. I think Bryce Young is a better player than his situation was last year. Um and so we'll put Washington somewhere if my if this will unfreeze. Okay, wins the draft is where it landed. That's what we'll go with. So we have um NFC West, NFC South, NFC East. NFC North, all accounted for, with some wild cards mixed in. The Bears, the Falcons, the Seahawks, the Eagles, okay? We have the AFC North and the AFC North. Whew, I'm already calling the wild card there. That's pretty bold. AFC South, um, AFC East, AFC West, okay? So I think my biggest mystery is obviously the AFC East, I have not made, you know, every other team I predict a, vi- a victor, right? A winner of the division. I am not comfortable right now predicting a winner of the AFC North. It's too tight. And um, so I'm going to wait a few weeks, see how things shake out, and we will get back to it. So we will do this every Tuesday. Tomorrow will be my full week one pick. So make sure you come back for that. Thursday, I will probably do my touchdown picks, some touch, t- touchdown plays I like, and my college football underdog picks. And then Friday, um, maybe that's when I'll do my underdog picks, maybe on Friday. Okay, so expect content every single day, guys. Uh, we're hitting NFL hard. I'm glad you guys are sticking around. Hopefully, you are enjoying the content if you need me to do anything else, want me to cover anything else, drop it below in the comments, and we will see you tomorrow.